So landing systems are definitely something that require a little bit more work. But we're going to kind of go in a different direction today. Because I think that this is always kind of an important point that you have to kind of stop and touch upon. Which is the current state of Star Citizen viewed not only in the way that it is, bugs and all, warts and all, but also viewed from the perspective of what it could be. Because, like, right now, I am, in other games, I am locked in a lot of work. Like, there's a lot of things that I need to do on a daily basis elsewhere to keep up progression, to keep, you know, powering up my character. And it's very time-consuming. Now, it's something that I don't mind doing. You know, I'm not afraid of the work but it does take up a lot of my time but the truth is is that I since the release of 3.6 I have probably played six or seven hours if not more of Star Citizen bugs and all because you know for the one thing yeah I get a little footage out of it but also because the truth is I enjoy it and I think one of the big driving things behind, you know, coming back day after day and putting in time on Star Citizen, a game that really has a, a lot of bugs in it, is because, like, the potential is there. I mean, when you when you play Star Citizen, even now, in its current state, if you were to sit there and say, imagine there were no bugs, imagine everything they gave us right now worked. It'd be a pretty great game. Just can't really, you know, stick the landing. Now, in defense of Star Citizen, one of the more frequent complaints um, that you see in chat in the game and you know there are complaints is the bugs it, it always happens you know you always see people going like oh man you know i just had you know thirty thousand credits worth of cargo just evaporate i was trying to land and i crashed oh the game crashed and i lost everything yada 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 but the truth is is you have so many players coming in playing the game and ultimately kind of setting it aside at some point saying you know what i would rather play when the bugs are fixed but they keep coming back and they want to play it again and again and again the reason why is because you know quite honestly they're enjoying it they're enjoying the game they can see the potential they can see that there's activities in the game that they want to do there are things that they want to accomplish even if only for a short period before it gets erased in the next big patch. But it's the bugs that kind of push them out of it. And, you know, they all, we always end up saying the same thing. It's like, man, this would be a really great game provided it worked. You know, if they could just fix all the bugs, right? A lot of us feel that way. I mean, if you were to look at the current 3.6 client, if you could just reach in and just lift out all the bugs, if you could somehow just snap your fingers and it all worked, everything worked as intended, it'd be a pretty damn fun game to play, wouldn't it? It would be definitely worth the download and it would be worth the time to put into it. Even if you knew all your progress was being erased at the end of the next quarter, you would still have fun playing it, wouldn't you? And so it kind of brings to mind the argument of why don't they just stop for a second and just fix all the bugs, right? It's, it just seems so easy. It seems so evident that, that that's what they should do. They should just stop, just fix all the bugs, and then move on. But there's a problem with that. Every time you introduce a new system into the game, every time you add a new layer, you know, it breaks things, obviously. And the thing that 
you know, what CIG is doing, which, you know, isn't really fixing bugs, you know, is because that so much work would be wasted fixing bugs and then fixing them again in the next patch and then fixing them again in the next patch because you're not sure how many times that thing is going to get broken with all the new, you know, implementations, all the new services, all the new features that you are going to add into the game. You're not sure how many times that thing is going to be broken. And so you frequently hear this, you know, this bug has existed for X amount of patches. We all get frustrated about it. I certainly do. But you have to remember that as they're layering new things in, as they're adding new components to this kind of big machine, if they were to stop and keep fixing the bugs, then it would tremendously slow down their per, you know their progress in getting the game finished at some point yes they are going to have to stop and go okay you know we're at a kind of a point of stability we've got our features we've got most of our features in the game we've got most of our services in the game now with that we can you know now that we can see how all these pieces interact with each other now we got to go around and start fixing the bugs there are a lot of minor issues that they can repair there are a number of balancing issues that they could kind of tweak and fix and there are maybe some systems that are reliant on future updates that maybe could be taken as okay we have this piece of it but let's wait for the other piece before we kind of implement this that sort of thing sort of like if you were to hold on to the reclaimer and just say, you know what, it's more or less finished, but let's hold on until we get salvaging, right? Which may not be the thing that everyone wants to hear because everyone wants to see the reclaimer, but at the same time, a reclaimer without salvaging doesn't really make a lot of sense. Oftentimes, these new features, these new things can suffer from bugs so badly that in a way, it kind of, you know, once again, it shapes the way you play. You kind of move away from these things. I find that even now, playing the game and experimenting with all these different things, by the time I start just kind of playing it for fun, I revert to the bunker raiding missions around Hurston. That's generally where I end up spending most of my time. That's where I generally have the most fun. And that's just something that I just do on my own time just because, you know, the FPS action is a little bit, you know, a little bit buggy, but it ends up being probably one of the more even and reliable areas of the game. The bunker rating missions tend to just kind of work. You go in, you kill everyone in the bunker, and you get paid for it, and you get paid quite decently for it. For your time spent and i genuinely enjoy it and that's kind of you know when i was talking about in the last video when i said you don't realize it but bugs sometimes shape the way you play the game that's one of the ways it kind of shapes how i you know i play the game i generally go for things that work i don't do a lot of cargo hauling i mean obviously cargo hauling would allow me to make a lot of money and you know fit out my ships the way i want to but at the same time, cargo hauling doesn't really work. It's not very reliable. I mean, in order to make money, you gotta kind of load up your ship. But in order to load up your ship, you have to spend pretty much all your money to fill that cargo to make money the most efficient way possible. The problem is, is any one little bug, any little error, any disconnection from the server. And you know, you're 99% sure that all that progress was just erased. And that sucks. So you tend to go for kind of the easier stuff, right? And that, unfortunately, is probably the way it's going to be for quite some time. It's not something to really, I think, get disheartened by. It's just, it's the reality of the situation, you know? There, in order to keep progressing into bringing new features in the game, they have to kind of say, you know, these are certain bugs that we're aware of, we're tracking, but until we're sure how it's going to interact with this system and that system, we can't really 
devote a lot of time to fixing them because in the end that time is just simply going to be replicated again and again and again as we bring new features into the game over time right so we'd probably much rather have those people helping to work on bringing in those new features so that once we got kind of more or less a full table you know we've got everything that we need on that table then we can start to look at okay now how do we fix all of this it sounds kind of like counterintuitive right but that's generally the way it works is you got to kind of get all your features together and then start to figure out now how do i make this whole mess work for us the players it just means that we're going to have to find our own little niches in Star Citizen for a while. Things that work. Things that are, you know, that are enjoyable. And, you know, just kind of look to the future and hope for the day that CIG says, now is really the time when we put Mark Abent to work and we really start crushing the bugs that are really important in the game. Anyways, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us. Please follow. Please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.